sought to have this hearing in this courtroom the last time, or did he have it someplace else? Two. Two. So the original trial, though, that started in here, correct? This room was here 37 years ago, wasn't it? It was. Uh, I still 37 years ago? No. 35, 35 years ago. It wasn't 35 years ago? All right. Sorry. since you were in this room, if you were ever in this room. I know Judge, Judge Casada had a different courtroom down the uh, down the way, but this is the courtroom I've got for today. I don't remember if your original trial back 30 plus years ago would have been in this room or was it in another room? Do you remember? No, I don't remember. You don't remember? Okay. Well, since two years ago, the last time you were uh, brought to Pinellas County for a court case, Judge Casada's retired. He's actually moved out of town. Uh, so I'm here now. My name's Pat Syracuse. I'm the circuit judge court judge that's now assigned to the post-conviction case involving Mr. Daly. Now, Judge Pennick, the original uh, judge on your case, you probably already heard, passed away. He's no longer here. Uh, Beverly Andrews, the prosecutor that was in charge of your case, she's retired. She's not here anymore. And John Halliday, he's long gone from the sheriff's office. And I believe John Woods, the medical examiner on your case, she's passed away. But here we are 35 years later, 35 years after uh, your conviction, and I want to talk to you about some of the events that bring us all here today. Uh, during the last six months, because that's about how long I've been assigned this case, I've been, uh, well, reading a lot of documents. I read a lot of court records, heard the attorney's arguments a lot, and I even looked at some photos, and I read your deposition from two weeks ago. Today, it's my hope to hear from somebody that was actually around and involved in the events that bring us here. I mean, you're one of the original people. Most of the other people on this case are, you know, we read about it, but we weren't participating in your trial. We weren't participating in Mr. Daly's trial. You, sir, though, you've been on this from the very beginning. Now, I'm not here to pass judgment on you in any way, sir. Um, that's, you know, got nothing to do with what we're here to do today. I know you've had attorneys talk to you. I know you've had investigators talk to you. I know you've had judges talk to you about everything from perjury charges, to parole hearings, to contempt over the years. I'm not going to treat you like an idiot. I'm not going to be disrespectful to you and pretend that there's any way I can threaten you into testifying. It's not what I'm here to do today. And you know that, so there wouldn't be any point, right? Right. Okay. So, in preparing for today, some of the things I did was I read your depots and I listened to some of your calls from your mom. I'm sorry that I got in a position where I had to do that. It's never my intention to unnecessarily insert myself into people's private lives. You're on your way doing your thing here. I know you're in prison, but you should still be treated with respect, the same as anybody else. And your mom certainly doesn't deserve to be disrespected by having people eavesdrop on her. But it's part of the system, and it's part of what we're doing. So I had to listen, and I listened. Now, listening to your phone calls with your mom, and I actually only listened to two of them, uh, but listening to your phone calls with your mom, I think it might have even been the last two uh, from a couple weeks ago, and reading all your deposition stuff, I took, uh, I took three things away, three observations away from that. First one is that, well, as I already told you, there's no point in trying to threaten you with contempt or perjury or any of that nonsense. We've already figured out the parole commission's not gonna let you go, we know that. So, I'm not gonna do that. Second thing I figured out is you feel very strongly that law enforcement didn't give you a fair shake 35 years ago. I get that, I do, and I hear your concerns on that. And I read your concerns ex extensively. Like I told you, Halliday's not here, he's gone. Andrews, she's not here, she's gone. I don't know whether you had much of a grievance with Judge Pennick, but he's gone. And certainly Joe, Joe Woods isn't around anymore. They're all gone, and you're still here 35 years later. I brought you here today to ask you, isn't today finally the day for you to tell the world your story from the witness stand, as a witness, as it could have been 35 years ago, but as we're asking you to do here today. And I'm asking you as a gentleman. And the third thing that I took from listening to your phone calls with your mom, the third thing that I took from reading your depot was, 
you don't consider yourself to be a bad person. Your family visits you, supports you, you talk to them like a gentleman, you appear to be polite to me, never seen, seen you do or, or say or heard you do or say anything that's outside of the bounds of being a gentleman. <laughs> and you made several times the observation in police reports over the years and your deposition that drugs and a lifestyle back in 1985 brought you into a position where you didn't want to be. You felt like you didn't belong. That wasn't the lifestyle you wanted. The drugs you were doing weren't helping you and put you in a bad spot. You're not on drugs now. You've had a lot of time to reflect. Three and a half decades. But you're a good person at heart. That's what I want to appeal to today. You know that your mom's here because she told me she was going to be here. Uh, I had her step out of the courtroom today before I talked to you because, again, I don't want to put you in an awkward spot in front of her. And I'm kind of, this is the spot we've got. So it probably doesn't get any more awkward than this, right? If you want, I can let her come back into the courtroom when you testify. <laughs> you don't want her to be in the courtroom when you testify? I won't have her in the courtroom when you testify. It would be my goal to make this as easy for you to do as possible because we've all been waiting a long time to hear from you. But, um, you know, if you do decide to testify, each side's going to get you to take a chance to ask a question. Now here's the thing, you don't know me. Like I said, I'm a new judge on this case. I feel very strongly that each person, when they take the witness stand, should be treated like a person deserving of respect, because each person is deserving of respect. If you testify, I know you've been accused of some terrible things over the years. I know bad allegations have been thrown around. Nobody gets disrespected in my courtroom because I will advocate for you. So nobody's gonna be unpleasant to you. They're gonna ask you questions. If you answer the questions, no problem. You don't answer the questions, I'll try to contain everybody, but you know how that goes. You've been in courtrooms before, so you've seen it. Um, if you feel like Joan Woods and Detective Halliday were the kind of bad people that lied on you 35 years ago, today's your day to set the record straight. Today's your day to tell the truth to both sides. Give everybody an opportunity to hear, and I would suggest to you that you have a responsibility to Kelly Bogio and her family to tell us what happened. You've always said, and you said it again just three weeks ago or two weeks ago on page 132 of your deposition, you said, you wish you could do more, okay? Today's the day you can do more. Today is your chance. If you want to do more, if you want to testify, you'll be treated with respect, the same respect every other witness gets, and it'll be your opportunity to be heard. So, what's your answer? Do you want to talk? Yes, yeah, sir, I can. Uh, Testify, I'm gonna bring Shelly back and take away the pain from her family. I understand. Uh, and that statement I made, I said what happened. I made an original statement when I turned myself in. Well, I don't want to get into it yet. Okay, yeah, we're, so we're at the end of that statement, I said three hours, we done questions asked and answered. They asked everything they wanted. And at the end, I said exactly what happened, that I didn't kill Shelly, what not. And that's all. I really don't plan on testifying any further. I know you don't plan on testifying any further, but we've gone to a lot of trouble to arrange this, and I understand that you've made sworn statements, but you've made many sworn statements over the years, many that contradict with each other. Today I need to know the final truth. Today is when I want you to testify to what really happened. Now, I get it. It wouldn't be fun to do it in this room. It's awkward. There's lots of TVs. I get it. And nobody wants to. But you told your mom and your family that comes to visit you you're the good person in this story that's been wrong. <coughs> that's the case. If you want to tell your story, I'm hopefully the good judge to give you the opportunity to demonstrate what happened. Like I said, I'm new here, so help me out, you know? I mean, everybody's watching. Can you, can you do me a solid? Do you well, want to testify? Well, testifying is not going to change my situation whatsoever anyway. Agreed. And a good person would accept what their situation is, and they would do what's right, and take the witness stand and tell the truth. Now. I've already told you, I'm not going to pretend that I'm going to call the parole commission for you. I'm not going to call them and say anything bad, and I'm not going to call them and say anything good. I'm not going to hold you in contempt, and I'm not going to threaten you with, uh, with all that stuff because it won't work. But if you're a good person, wouldn't a good, a good person testify? At this point in time, I don't feel that I need to. I didn't testify in my trial. I didn't testify in the depot for James Daly, nor in his trial, and I'm not going to testify against him now. Okay. And uh, is there anything I can say that persuades you to testify? No, sir. 
How about this? Uh, uh, if I let your mom talk to you, do you think she could help facilitate me getting you to testify? No, yeah, I made it my mind. Okay. Um, well, I'm not going to say that I'm going to accept that as your final answer because I still want to talk to you a little bit more. As you can tell, I'm trying to be a persuasive guy here. I'm trying to help you get to the point where you can give us a couple hours of your time. I mean, you know, let's think about it. We brought you all the way down from state prison. We got everybody else here. What's what's two more hours of answering questions so we can finally put this to rest? I mean, is that a problem? It's not gonna hurt you. Yeah, but I don't see it where it'll help uh, help anybody concerned that I need to. Well, you said that you wanted to do something, and today's your chance. The Bojo family is here also, and they, I'm sure, would like to hear you testify the same way that. I'm sure that your mother would want to hear you testify and tell the truth. And she even said that before I asked her to step out of the room. Um, you know, do you have any questions about that? No, sir. I don't. Like I stated, I can't help bring the family back or the pain her family's already suffered. I don't want to testify any further. Doesn't she deserve somebody telling the truth here in court? And that's yeah. just what you have right there. And in the original statement, when I turned myself in, all the forensic stuff back it up. That's where Joan Woods started, all day come out with the one-line profession. All that was after. That original statement, all the forensic stuff that couldn't be changed, even Joan Woods trying to change from an autopsy, all that came later. But it everything like backed up that statement. Sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. It sounds like these are stuff that you'd like to tell us about. And I know that I read it, but again, you've been you've been reading on Florida law and thinking about Florida law and you participated in trials. You know that jurors and judges were supposed to evaluate the witnesses by seeing them in person, not just by reading their depositions. I appreciate that you were willing to give the deposition, but my question is, will you talk about it here in court where I can look you in the eye like a gentleman and I can listen to what you have to say? Are you willing to do that for me today? No, sir. Okay. All right, I'm going to have you step in the back and uh, we'll bring you back out because I'm, I'm not accepting that as your final answer, okay? Thank you. 